All right. So, hello, everybody. Now, uh, this is virtual wine tasting number 38, dessert wines. Now, uh, dessert wines are typically sweet and they're, they're used as both the digestif, something to assist in digestion after a meal, or to accompany a post-meal dessert. Now, these come in two forms, sweet wine and fortified wines. Our first wine, the Sauterne, is a sweet wine and the rest are fortified. Just know that the real difference between the two is that fortified means that additional alcohol is added, typically also made from grapes. You know, like uh, brandy or aqua vitae. Aqua vitae being, you know, water of life, also known as grape moonshine. Also, it's a loose rule of thumb that for sweet wines, you want to pair them with things that are less sweet than they are, or otherwise um, they start to kind of get a little bitter. So the first wine that we're going to be talking about is Sauterne. Now, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen out. Give me a thumbs up once you see it. All right. So. We are going to be over in Bordeaux. Now, we've gone over, well, for, for those of you that have been with me for a while, we've gone over Bordeaux wines before, but mainly the red blends near the Gironde Estuary, which is, which is this part right here. Uh, and that, that's, that, but what we're gonna be looking at instead is the Graves region way down south. So this little area right here. And it doesn't get nearly the, the same praise as you know the, the Medoc and the uh, uh, you know, all right bank region. So what they grow there is a, a white grape called Semillon. And that, but that's not the, the special part about about this it's that the climate is very favorable to a certain kind of mold uh called botrytis and it grows well, essentially on these grapes and it's uh known in many wine regions as the noble rot now what it does is it absorbs uh, a bunch of water well, here's here's what kind of looks like it's just this kind of like gray you know, mold that, that's, you know, uh, sits on these. But what it's doing is it's starting to, to leach the water out of these grapes. So that near the end, they look like effectively a bunch of raisins. And you see, it's not, it's not very uniform, but, you know, for the most part, all of those that are, um, you know, have had all this water sucked out of them, what's left behind is this high amount of just like almost like pure syrup and that high amount of sugar even for the wine so normally when you uh ferment a wine you you and you're fermenting it dry um, it's, it's that the yeast has eaten all the sugar out of out of out of that grape juice now this has so much sugar in it that it gets up to that that alcohol level where it's poisonous for the yeast and will actually kill itself off, but there's still a bunch of effectively, you know, food left behind. So in other words, sugar. And so we still get like alcohol around up to 13%, but you also have just a huge amount of sugar. Now the, the Germans also use this same technique for their high-end reasons. Uh, so if you ever look at some that are called uh, Auslase, beer in Auslase, or Trockenbieren Auslix. Uh, all three of those are, um, you know, have have some residual sugar and are typically, you know, far more sweet than their uh, cabinet Rieslings um, near on the bottom end. So uh, that's it that we're going to be talking about for uh, our Sauterne. So let's go ahead and pour ourselves some. Uh, for most of us, we have the 
Chateau, Chateau Lerable, 2018. And I'll go ahead and pour a little bit of that in. And we're going to be going through our deductive process. So first one that we're going to be looking at is we're actually going to be having a bit of a, a, a look at this wine. And what we want to do is take a bit of a, a white background, tilt that glass at about a 45 degree angle, and just kind of peer at it and see what kind of color we see into it. <laughs> and this wine, I mean, in in my mind, uh, this this is like just pure gold. <laughs> about as, as, as just kind of like dark just just a deep golden color <laughs> now you know on usual wines you know the, the other thing that we like to do is is swirl and kind of see the legs but because of both the the alcohol and sugar content um there really isn't a, a formatted you know way of of determining what that that alcohol level is because of that extra amount of sugar in here and so you essentially just get like just hugely thick uh you know legs on on any of these kind of dessert wines but uh we will go ahead and swirl and we're going to use our second sense our nose so let's uh give it a swirl and a sniff and uh see what we kind of pick up on in our uh on our aromas <laughs> So it's everyone getting on the nose here. I, for me, I, I get, you know, well, it, it's kind of typical for, for a Semillon, um, especially a Sauternes. You're, you're going to be getting almost typically a, a bunch of apricot, like, you know, kind of fresh, just like a, a fresh apricot. Maybe a little bit of apple. An apple, like a, yeah, not, not like your. You know, there's yeah. this, there's this kind of like pungency to it that, that almost kind of smells like tea. Anyone get anything else on this? What was that, Tom? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know tropical fruit a little bit. You're getting tropical fruit, Kurt? Okay. <laughs> Maybe some honey as well. Definite honey. Well, honey, for sure. All right, well, uh, I think we've uh, teased ourselves enough. So let's uh, go ahead and have, give this thing our first taste of the night. So cheers. Cheers. How, how many smiles just showed up on the screen after tasting that? <laughs> we got one over here that she's smiling. I, I promise. <laughs> so now, what's everyone getting on on the on the palate? Yeah, honey, honey on the palate. Honey, okay. I'm gonna say cola. 
speak of the devil. That's an interesting one. Canned peach syrup. Goodbye, Carl. It's not it's like a soon be homeless. Canned peach syrup. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting that kind of like cooked, you know, pit fruit. You know, like like apricot, peach, nectarine, like really ripe to the point of, yeah, almost like a like cooked syrupy. Kind of pick up the tannins on the finish. Oh, you're actually getting like tannin. So, well, I mean, this this thing has some some kind of. It, it still has kept a lot of its like acidity. All right. Well, now to uh, try it with a couple of different things and uh if anything kind of stands out um the like either manchego like i don't know if you what kind of cheeses you've got but uh if you have like some kind of manchego or or even that that stilton that i you know prescribed for the, the port um try a little bit with it and you know if anything really stands out uh, let us know <laughs> Yeah, for our, our, our new people, um, typically for the, the kind of food pairing part is kind of, kind of learn it in three steps. Sip, chew, sip. So you want to kind of sip your wine, uh, get that kind of, you know, flowing on your palate, priming your, your taste buds. Then take your, your bite of whatever it is, start chewing it around. But before that final where you're swallowing the food, take another sip of the wine and wash it down. And that kind of flavor mingling is what? kind of where the magic happens. Okay. Wine is dark chocolate. Okay. okay. Throw some tape on there. It's really good. <laughs> Kill milk cheddar, aged gouda, and a little bit of fonte. Some cheeses. Mm. So I, I, I won't say I cheated, but since I, I kind of know that Sauternia is going to have like a heavy apricot flavor to it, I actually got a croissant filled with apricot preserves. <laughs> and <That's> wow. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you kind of know if you know which which flavors are really heavy yeah. on the wine you know you being able to match up that same kind of uh you know flavor profile with that exact fruit yeah you're you're, you're going to have a winner <laughs> you serve in a chocolate bag with berries and it, the raspberry strawberries really pair nicely as well sweetness i think of the berries with the walnut yeah so, so the, so turn just just like a, a sweet riesling are really good for uh, um, like 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 some kind of like spice food, especially like Thai. They made a lamb curry. I wonder how that would play with this. Uh, depends on the curry. Vin, Vin, Vindaloo, I, I would probably say no, but it's yeah, a it's green curry, but. I use a lot of vegetables that are like carrots and onions that are sweet. So apparently, it's according to Sarah's son, it's not spicy. It's a sweet curry. Oh, okay. Like butter chicken or something would be. A... Oh yeah, I bet you're right, Lee. You should put some up. I know we were there. We <laughs> it was right there in front of us. I said a mango Wednesday bit. Also, really good stuff. The how to what you get with the port. We don't, that's all we get. Easily. There's three more to go through. I know. <laughs> Now, I, and again, I, I, I have to kind of warn you, you know, with these, especially the, the, the next three, because they're all fortified. So 
you know, you having kind of smaller pores is, uh, you know, still going to get you, uh, you know, kind of, kind of wobbly. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Stilton actually works pretty well with it. Mm -hmm. That that bit of like salty to the, to the sweet. Number three. <laughs> what was that Lee? No, it's a poor number three. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're still poor number three of this a turn? <laughs> Uh, most people's glasses are empty. Yeah, I know. Well, let's move on to the Madeira. <laughs> so, uh, with that, so the next one that we're going to be having is the Madeira, which is our Blandy's Five Year Malmsey. Now, the reason we're not having a Portugal port is because I wanted us to experience Madeira and it wasn't fair to feature Portugal twice. But I think, <laughs> I think our Australian alternative is going to blow your mind. So uh, if, you've, if you've had Portugal port before, you know, um, it's going to be a little different. Uh, so the island of Madeira, let's, let's get the screen back up here. Oh island of Madeira. Uh, this this is a place that's about 200 miles away from Portugal. Uh, but uh, they they conquered it back in like 1419. And well, it's closer to like Morocco. Now the the it, what it did was it became kind of like an important refueling <laughs> station. Okay, <there> <laughs> And, you know, it, it was that refueling station for, for like long uh, ocean voyages over to the Americas. Now the, the island's wines were initially developed with their kind of unique character on these expeditions where they were subjected, um, you know, to a lot of like seasonal, um, like sunshine and whatnot. And that heating and cooling happened over like months and sometimes even years. And that historic kind of process still kind of are, is mimicked today by instead they just they heat the wine during um, both the the fermentation process and also um, afterwards when they they add the the extra alcohol to it. Now there's there's three different types of Madeira, and uh, how it's presented is associated with a particular grape. So Verdeo. Which, which is a, a typical white grape. Um, if you see that with Madeira, it's done dry. So if you like a really, you know, uh, it, it's more like a, a, 
uh, not not bitters, but uh, uh, vermouth. It, it, it has has that much of that same characteristics as vermouth, and it you know it, it's good. It's the stuff that that I had tried during my my uh, uh, sommelier training, and I personally didn't like it. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was expecting with a fortified wine that I was going to be getting something sweet, and that was like ah, you know that tasted more like something you put into a uh, like a some type of martini. <laughs> now, uh, this, the second one is Pinta Negra. And so if you see Madeira Pinta Negra, it's going to be, it'll usually say whether it's sweet or dry, because it can be kind of either. And then there's the Malvasi, which is the kind that we have, also known as the Malvasi grape. I didn't know that until yesterday. <laughs> now, unlike Sauterne, uh, this and the rest are what's known as fortified wine, um, meaning that the fermentation process was stopped at some point uh, from the, the yeast eating any more sugar by adding some kind of spirit like brandy or aquavitae. And, you know, because again, once once that, that level of alcohol gets to a certain level, all the yeast just dies off, you know, because it's too toxic of an environment. And so adding that booze to there all of a sudden, you know, just kind of cuts them off, kills them. Now, now Madeira is a little weirder how it's produced. Um, you know, as we kind of said before, that these these casks were, were kind of exposed to the sun for years. And it, it's mostly done now by, um, you know, they'll have these big steel tanks, but they'll have like a bunch of hot water uh, pipes running around it. And they'll just, they'll just keep kind of heating this stuff up uh, leading to the sugars caramelizing. Now, uh, and so what will happen is that, well, between that and it having a little bit of, of oaking to it, um, these should start to have much more of that kind of like oxidative kind of browning uh, colors to them comparatively to, you know, uh, some of the other wines or like the Sauterne. So let's go ahead and pour our Blandy's five-year Modera, or Madera. So are there different terms for fortifying with different types of spirits? Yeah, it, 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 fort, fortifying is fortifying. Okay. I'm assuming it would affect the flavor quite a bit there. No. Yeah, well, yeah, because if, if, I mean, well, brandy is, is going to, you know, have, it's going to be aged in oak, so it's going to already have some of those kind of vanilla, you know, cocoa qualities um, that'll get imparted. But for the most part, much like port, um, and it's also much more uh, cost effective, is they'll just add, uh, you know, like essentially grape white lightning, which is, you know, 90 95% alcohol. <laughs> and so, well, looking at this. So it's a little clear, but, but kind of like a, a light amber hue. Yeah. <laughs> and and th this, this color here, I mean, th this is effectively what you know if, like any any white wine so, so thing you say you're looking at like a, like a chardonnay or something you know uh all, all all wines are going to they're they're both evolving to get to essentially this color <laughs> so you know white wines are after i don't know 40 50 years they're going to look like this you know red wines also going to look like this it's just going to have a bunch of like you know red crud down at the bottom. So now that we've kind of looked at that, then we also see that, you know, well, actually these legs are not as thick as the uh, Sauterne, but let's give it a bit of a swirl and a sniff. What are people getting on the nose here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I smell the nose. Oh, yeah. Just wake it up. 
Maybe some like dried fruits. Somebody over here to the right of me who doesn't want to be heard said butterscotch and caramel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's like there's like a nuttiness to it. Yes. Like either walnut, maybe hazelnut. It is really I was looking for a pecan. Yeah, walnuts. Are we unmuted? No, we are unmuted. And again, it still has that kind of like weird oxidative smell to it, and and, and that that that'll be the thing. If you like this kind of smell on, on a regular wine, would tell you that you're not going to enjoy it. Oh, I have data. It's because, burned. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it like there's been some fault in the the cork that hasn't sealed it up, and it's just been you know like leaching in way too much oxygen and it's just at that point it's just a you know oxidated wine <laughs> but you know for something that you know i mean that's the whole the name you know fortified for you know when you add kind of alcohol to it means strengthen and that's the thing is that like all of these that are are fortified you know you open them up um you put them in the fridge and they're good for like three to four months yeah, uh, they, they because of that that extra alcohol in there, just well keeping keeping well that and they're already oxidated, so <laughs> there there isn't much more that can be done to this to you know kind of uh, deteriorate. We should make it a dessert that uses stilted. <laughs> All right, well let's give this thing a taste. Good. Okay. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, no, sour cream apple. I really have very much water. <laughs> <laughs> I like it so It's weird. The, the first thing that, that even comes to mind, I mean, it, it tastes a bit like fruitcake, but I'm a lot of like orange zest. Fruitcake. All the fruit. I don't really like it. It's still fruit. It's supposed to be raspberry mousse, but um, I think I love it. At first blush, it's very similar to the Vinsanto that we had while we were in Greece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Vinsanto. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's another fortified wine. Mm -hmm. is, is that Italian? It's good. Well, Greek, Italian, but mostly Greek. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's sun-dried grapes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it, it's more similar to like the Sautern or, or, well, it's actually more like Amarone where they, they'll dry the grapes after harvesting and then press them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they're, I, I, uh, I'm trying, trying to remember what the, uh, the fortified wine from Italy is. Uh, 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 it, 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 they, they make a, a, a sauce. No, they make a, a sauce out of it for chicken. Um, oh, uh, 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 grappa? No, no, no. It's a, it's it's kind of a not a, not a sweet wine, but it's a it's a fortified wine from uh, Sicily. I do not like the food. Um, yeah. Yes, but Dang it, now I can't. <laughs> the darn name. 
Marsala. 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 That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying Marsala. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that's the, the yes. Italian fortified one. Backseat driver over here. It's like, <laughs> say my Marsala, say my Marsala. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> but that, that's, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Is <laughs> it's a, it's a bit like Marsala. Yeah. Because it's not like, it's not syrupy sweet, and it's got that, you know, kind of boozy bite to it. There has no choice this time. It's not just me. It's usually. 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 I loved after five. And he was like, the last one, well, he opened like a 4.4. He's really nice. He doesn't remember that. You were up a little bit after I left it over. But yeah, I can definitely feel the the extra alcohol on my tongue more than it are. Yeah. <laughs> Where it is the alcohol in this thing? Oh, yeah, nineteen percent. <laughs> no wonder it's so good. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, most of your fortified are going to be somewhere between eighteen and I think twenty-three. Is this... uh, Sailor Bear, <laughs> Princess Cruise Line Bear. Ah. We are stopping at Madeira in November. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, n now you are uh, well educated on at least that particular. Uh, you know, <laughs> now you're going to ho hopefully try some of the, the different Madeira out there. Because again, there's there's the three different types. Amazing. So, you know, definitely try the, the Verdeo just, just to Hacker. say you've tried it, even though you, you won't know, like it, just try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it's it's memorable because then you go back to like the, the sweeter Madeira and you're like, ooh, I, 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 I like that. Because for, for the longest time, I just avoided Madeira because I thought that it was just, you know, the one type that just tasted like bleached ass. <laughs> How do you know what bleached ass tastes like? That's, that's a story for a, for a, for a lot more wine. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, yeah. well, see, that was the thing is that like during the, the SOM training, um, you know, that, like every day they're, they're pouring you groups of four wines and, and, and we're, we're doing like four, four to five different uh, tastes of these throughout the day. And they're they're telling you to to spit each one of them, you know, which I never did. <laughs> but, but but that Madeira, I did because it was it was, it was I, I I took like the first little sip and I'm like, no. But then I had to take the second one to really you know understand the flavors. But that thing got spit to the spit cup. <laughs> got quite a bit in their glasses so we'll, we'll hold off for another minute or so and then we'll, we'll move on to the to the Pedro Jimenez. <laughs> moving on to the what the Pedro Jimenez okay. 
Pedro Jiménez. Pedro Jiménez. Pedro Jiménez. Pedro what is now? Let them go. If they ever clean it, they're going home. All right. Well, while everyone is uh, finishing up, we I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen back out for our next. Yeah. Why? One of them. What? Oh. Our next one is our Pedro Jimenez. And for this, we're moving to the like southern part of Spain, uh, right along, it's along that southern edge, right next to Portugal and also Africa. But it, it, it's on that, that Atlant Atlantic side instead of, you know, more into the, um, the Gulf or sea there. Now, uh, the grape used for dry cherries because there, there's dry and sweet. Now, dry sherry is called the Palomino, but, but sweet cherries uh, blend in uh, some some Pedro Jimenez, um, or those that are labeled Pedro Jimenez use it exclusively. Uh, now, because of the, the method of aging sherry, you typically won't find a vintage. And the reason for that is something called the Solera system. And so what they do is, you know, the, the, the new, you know, version of it gets put into these, you know, casks. Oh, I'll zoom in. You know, these are the new ones. But every year, they, they'll harvest from the bottom, you know, the Solera, and then start going up the, um, you know, these uh, Criadera. And that, I think that that word means nursery, because that that's where you know it's developing before it uh, you know becomes something that can be actually produced. But that's why you won't actually see. And, and it's the way for for a lot of these. Uh, a lot of ports um, are, are kind of the same way. Uh, they'll either say NV or they just won't have a year to them whatsoever. You know, instead they'll have something like. 10, you know, sometimes 10, 20, you know, 50 or you know, 40, 50 year uh, tied to them. But uh, I mean, there isn't really much more to say about that other than the fact that that uh, sherry, you is kind of a, a an anglicized like word for uh, Jerez which is the, that, that region that I had kind of shown you on the map in Spain, that you know, for some reason, yeah, you go there, like the stuff that's being produced there, it's from Jerez, but everyone here is Sherry. And so, well, the rest of the world, we get Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and pour our, which one do we have here? Emilio Hidalgo, Pedro Jimenez, otherwise just called PX. That, that, that's the, the, the typical way that you, you know, because Pedro Jimenez is a, a bit of a mouthful, so just PX. PX is where you go to buy things. If, if, if you're military, yes. <laughs> the PX and the BX. And the Navy is just the exchange. Ah. <laughs> Okay, I don't like that. Oh, wow. This is, this, this is syrupy. It is very syrupy, but like they made syrup out of root vegetables. Wow. No. So this, this is, this, like, the la like the last one was kind of amber. This is like straight up brown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, <laughs> it's brown and opaque, but on the if you actually when you have that that forty five degree angle, if you look, it actually has kind of a golden rim to it. Yeah, it does. And that that's kind of you know well, these these are coming from from white grapes, and so the juice is actually white. It's just that it it's been oxidizing aging for so long that it's gaining this kind of color to it. 
take a wine like Eggs on that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, swirl this and what do we get on the nose? Yeah, I can smell too. Like uh, for me, I'm I'm getting like like figs. I can I can see that. We can raise it. I don't know, maybe maybe some toffee. A little bit, yeah. Oh, almost 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 like like treacle. When that big comes out, we have a big spread. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does anyone get anything else on the, the nose? The pigs. Okay. Yeah. The only other thing that I could I could even it's not 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 coffee. It's almost like uh like like almost like espresso. It's like that that weird kind of like pungency of yeah, just, I mean, and also just just a lot of you know, kind of dried raisins, dark chocolate that's too bitter to eat, like you know, above eighty five percent cocoa. Okay. Like, yeah, pure cacao. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's give this molassesy looking nice. thing a, a taste. So, cheers. <laughs> How do you put that into words, right? It's like smoking a cigarette. It's gross. Oh, that is rich. How <laughs> you're coming up with positive Fifteen. Off-brand Nyquil. <laughs> What'd you call it, Lee? Off, Off brand, NyQuil? brand NyQuil. Like store brand stuff, you know, where it's not. It, it doesn't just taste of the, the color is green <laughs> or red. It's not the green stuff. It's all the pink Exactly. I wonder what the glycemic index of this is. I wonder what the glycemic index of this is. Like 100%. Like 100 White bread. I mean, to me, it just it, it just tastes like the inside of a fig newt. Like just just scrape off all the cake and that that fig paste. Is... <laughs> but it almost kind of, it's somewhere between there and like a date, where it, it's got that just like saccharinely sweet, cloyingly sweet, you know, like syrup to it. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's a. Uh, I would say it's bad. You, 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 I mean, you have to have a, a, you know, if you have like a serious sweet tooth, this is great. Um, I do have a serious sweet tooth, but this is not great. <laughs> well, I mean, well, to me, this is almost like a cream share, where where it's to that that level of you know, like almost like syrupiness, um, and and for me. But my favorite thing to do with a cream sherry is you mix it with a little bit of uh, sweet champagne. We well, can mix this with champagne, but not not a dry champagne. You actually you actually want something with a you know like like off dry, even like a little sweet, and th th this kind of stuff works wonders. Almost, in it. almost I, like moscato or something. Yeah, uh, I, I was I was turned on to that at a. Uh, uh, a winery in Temecula where they they produce almond champagne. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's Wilson's Creek, and they're they're kind of distributed throughout the, the whole country. Um, but they also they also create a a cream sherry. And when you're at the winery there, they'll 
for, for two tickets, you actually sure. pour the cream sherry and their almond champagne into a glass and it's called their Angel's Kiss. And it is just delightful. I mean, they also, they also do the same thing with port because they have, they have this like decadent mm -hmm. chocolate port. But, you know, like I said, the, the, the sherry and port by themselves were just like, they were too sweet and, and there, wasn't enough, there wasn't enough other stuff. And so you almost kind of you almost kind of need something a little bit more acidic and watery to kind of cut this. But but yeah, by by itself, I'm I'm not as much of a fan of this. Mm. Um, there's a lot of people out there that that just swear by Pedro Jimenez. Like that's the only thing they you know drink. But it, it, They're all what type two diabetics? Close. <laughs> 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 uh what one of the i mean well i mean I, uh visa is, is a big lover of of pedro jimenez <laughs> but but yeah this is like it, it, i don't want to say sickly sweet but it, it's getting close like I, I don't know if I could drink much more of this without without an insulin shot. <laughs> well, I can feel my teeth rotting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a sweet <laughs> tooth. Yeah, this is like like this is Butterworth like straight from the bottle. Serious <laughs> <laughs> I see like that. Wow. Well, you swirl the stuff in your glass and it almost kind of looks like frosted on its way down just because there's that much sugar. Well, still, you know, you look, hold it up to the light. Wherever it was, it's still darker than. Wow. Oh. But this is fancy. Very. <laughs> What's the alcohol content on this? Only 15. Only. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, but, well like I said, a lot of your fortified should be somewhere between 8 and 23. Oh, this smells like it's number four, right? So, gummy bears in this. So that'll work. <laughs> yeah. I also want to like, wash out and cut some of this uh, some of the sugar that's on the side with the Madeira yeah that kind of cleans it up <laughs> oh, water <laughs> you know oh wait that wasn't that bad yes now, now, now I just want to try that next one sec try, try, try a little bit of the PX and a little bit of the Madeira as the kind of lightning agent. You're mixing them? You're mixing them. I am. I'm making a blend. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll say that actually improved, improved it quite a bit. That's not hard to believe. It wouldn't take much to... Well, I mean, it, it didn't make it worse. It, it like I said, it, it, because it, it it cut that just like again that that syrupiness because that stuff felt like like just the, in on the mouth feel just felt like syrup. Mm -hmm. It's very heavy thick. No, oh, the Madeira, the most. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, there. Yeah, that was the. <laughs> There's no way I missed this. Yeah. No, more, more in it. All right. Everyone uh, about ready? Well, 
Well, well, since everyone's finishing the yeah, add up, we'll uh, move on to our. I made it bright red anyway. <laughs> Mixture of the Madeira and the. <laughs> Wine. I'm real wine. Actually, I'm not bad. <laughs> See? See? Madero, but Mark. You kick. Hey, like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you this one? No, they're All right. So, our port. So, so port. Oh, where, 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 where does port come from? <laughs> well, come, I mean, originally, it comes from Portugal. <laughs> But um, th there, there's a reason, and you know, you, you can thank England for port <laughs> uh, because it was during one of the wars between <laughs> itself and France that it decided it needed a new supplier for wine, so it turned to Portugal. But transportation made the wine kind of unstable and gross, and so they came up with this idea of fortifying it with spirits. Um, you know, in order to kind of help with that. And that actually made it transportable and enjoyable. And and to this day, many Brits will still buy a vintage bottle of port when their child is born and open it for them on their 21st birthday. Ooh. Now, uh, most port is non-vintage much of it using that same kind of technique as Spanish sherry, you know, taking from the oldest casks, filling from the newer casks. Uh, but there are some vintages out there because it's just, it was just that good of a year that you actually want, you know, that they wanted to to showcase that particular one. Um, I think the, the last like just phenomenal year uh, was I think 2011. So if you can find a 2011 out there, pick it up. You know, even though I think at this point it's pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, the, you won't actually see them every single year um, with a with a particular vintage. Now there there's a there's a few different types of port, but really you should know the two main types, which is tawny and ruby. Now ruby means that as soon as it's fortified, where you know you're again dumping those those spirits in there to stop fermentation. That as soon as that's put in there, it goes straight into the bottle. So that, that's why it's ruby, red. While tawny is, after it's been fortified, is aged in barrels, oxidizing the wine. And again, you know, that both red and white are going to kind of meet into that brown stage. Well, these, these kind of turn brown, hence the word tawny. Now, uh, Unlike Portugal, which has limitations on the grapes used, yeah, they, they use like a Tinto Sao, uh, Tinto Nacional, and there's a, there's a few others, but they have very specific grapes. Um, Australia has no such limits, but they typically use the grapes they're most known for, which is Syrah. Uh, also, after the year 2000, uh, you'll never see a, an Australian label that says port or even sherry. Much like champagne, both point or port and cherry are uh, region specific. And instead, you'll actually see them kind of like on our bottle, where they'll say tawny or ruby, or uh, for their sherries, it'll actually just say cream. Is it called port because it's from Portugal originally, or is that? Yeah, like yeah. like any any port, have, like every other place, um, can't call theirs port. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's just like champagne. You know, everything else is like sparkling wine. Uh, with with port, they'll they'll say it's port style or uh, fortified or sweet dessert wine, something other than just port. So let's go ahead and pour our Yolumba. Now, this is one that I had gotten a recommendation during my song training. Um, one of the other guys there that was also a, a pretty experienced guy, we, we were both comparing notes on port, and we both had our stories of uh, Australian ports because we both actually kind of liked them more than uh, Portugal ports. Because Portugal ports, you're, you're going to get like 
it's going to be straight raisin, um, you know, with, with like a little bit of like, you know, uh, like almond notes, things like that. But it's mostly just like dried raisins. Um, while the, the depth of character for uh, an Australian port is, is something to behold. <laughs> like the, the, the one that, that sold me on Australian port, uh, if you can find it, is Whiskers Boyk. But, but you know, uh, at, at his suggestion, the Yulumba is also a really good one. <laughs> so again, let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a look. And this, it still has kind of like a, like a few, like a bit of red characteristics to it, but it, it does have that brown, tawny, you know, look to it. You know, but it's a little bit lighter along the edge. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, look, looks kind of like a, like tea. Or, or brandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go ahead and give this thing a swirl and a sniff. And uh, let's see what we get on the nose. <sighs> so what's everyone smelling? Taste. Some butterscotch. A little peppery, almost like a Pinot Noir smell to it. It's like earthy? Yeah. The immediate thing that I start getting on this is molasses. It's like acetone. It smells like acetone. Acetone. Okay. Oh, actually. oh yeah. It's a polish remover. Yeah. Yeah. There's an acetone. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely. Yeah. Mm. I, I could definitely see that acetone. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Getting high on glue. <laughs> 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 we're, we're just absorbing the fumes. It's, it's like sniffing expo markers or something. Yeah, yeah like like for me, I don't get a lot of fruit smell from it. I get a lot of, yeah, you know, like I said, like almost like this, like somewhere between molasses and I don't know, like I want to say butterscotch. Yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, well, let's uh, go ahead and give this thing a taste. So, as <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet as the last one. No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this has a bite. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> So what are we getting on the what are we getting on the on the palate here? This is I don't know. It's better than the last one. I'm definitely liking this more than the sherry. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's got an alcohol. Yeah. It does, but I don't like this. Yeah, it, I don't, again, to me, this 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 is kind of to me typical of a of an Australian port where it's got that almost kind of like black strap molasses to it. It's almost like a bit of licorice. Oh god, licorice! Is it licorice? <laughs> oh, where's Sarah's purse? Purse. <laughs> licorice. I don't know. Not for me. Oh. <laughs> Fire. It's not. It's a good salt. Uh uh. No. Pepper? Little peppery. Yeah. What's the grape using this? Um, I mean, if I, if I was a 
betting man, it's going to be mostly Syrah or, or in Australia, Shiraz. So, and again, this, this is the one that, you know, if you, if you do have some Stilton around, try, try some Stilton port. That's good. Mm. Mm. Ah, that makes that Stilton really nice. <laughs> it's very good with the Stilton. Okay. Uh, really nice. No, I know. Like that was good. I Guys, I don't know if you caught that, but what you want to pair this with is black licorice. Salty black licorice. <laughs> oh, salty black licorice. Not too salty. You can keep your salty licorice. It's the IKEA salty licorice. The Swedish salty licorice. I saw it said something about roasted on There's they are salty. <laughs> I have a Danish friend who works in Los Alamos and she can all and she's getting angrier and angrier about it. <laughs> oh, out of, out of the four, uh, which was everyone's uh, favorites? The first one. <laughs> the Sautern? Yeah, I like the Sautern and then followed by the port. Port. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm much of the same you know, kind of opinion is that, you know, the other two shits like Sherry and, and PX, I mean, PX I'll have every once in a while, but uh, yeah, Madeira, you know, I kind of put into that same realm as like, you know, like as, as, as any other cooking wine. Uh, it, it's just, it's not really something to be the was okay. consumed, you know, by itself. Oh. I kind of like the Madeira as well. I mean, it, it was, it was, like I said, it was okay, but it's not something that I would be picking up to, to have on my shelf to, you know, drink with something. <laughs> but after, well, I mean, and, and I went, I went strictly with with like what's considered dessert wines, you know, because there are a lot of other sweet wines out there, but they're not really, you know, uh, dessert. You know, there's things like well, like Moscato, and, uh, you know, or whatnot, or Stella Rosa. <laughs> but, well, yeah. If you find yourself in the Niagara Falls region. Oh, or some ice wine? There's yes. some yeah. awesome ice wines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I picked some up uh, the last time that I went through Montreal. Yeah, at, at the- Dylan's recently is- mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually have like, I got like a three pack uh, that was, I think one was a Riesling and then one was like, uh, Vidal and Cab Franc. <laughs> yeah, it's the Cab Franc. Yeah. <laughs> Vidal yeah. is the one that exports <laughs> everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if you go to your Total Wine or whatever, there's Vidal. You can't really find the the Riesling or the Cab Franc mm -hmm. unless you go to Ontario. Yep. In Kansas City at all. Oh. All right. Well, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording. So go ahead and wave goodbye to YouTube. Bye, guys. <laughs>